Hello everyone, welcome to AeroHub and welcome back to the series of lectures in Airframe Structural Analysis and this is lecture number 13 of this series and in the last lecture we have discussed about the relationship between shear force bending moment as well as the loading condition and in this lecture we will discuss one of the important concept in airframe design that is the shear flow. As you can see I have a beam here a simply supported beam and I am loading this beam with a uniformly distributed load UDL of intensity W and we derive the relationship between shear force and bending moment. Similarly, we will take a small element here, small section of the beam of length DX and this is the element and we have a UDL on the top of this beam and the total length here is DX now we have a shear force capital V acting at this end and we have a moment capital M in clockwise direction on this side we have a shear force V plus dV and we have a moment M plus dM we discussed about, in, uh, about this in the last uh, lecture then from this diagram only we found out the, the relationship between bending moment and shear force as you can see here the moment is M and here we have moment M plus dM and I will put I will uh, take this section as section 1 here this point this side I denote as 1 and this side I denote as 2 ok so what the normal stress or direct stress acting at uh, section 1 will be M into y divided by i similarly the normal stress acting at section 2 will be m plus dm into y divided by i what is i here y here y is nothing but the distance from the neutral axis this may be this distance will be the y ok now i will plot the variation of normal stress that is uh, compression and tensile stress in a diagram this is the element and this will be our neutral axis and here you have variation like this and it will be decreasing at neutral axis to zero and it will be increasing here and this is for section 1 and for section 2 we will be having more amount of stress because we have m plus dm ok so the amount of normal stress variation will be higher on this side that's why I am making a bigger triangle here Okay, now you can see that the variation of normal stress is varying for section 1 and section 2. Okay, that is simply because we have a large amount of moment at section 2 when compared to section 1. Okay, now I will take a small element from this section. I will take a small element. I will take a small element. This is the element. and this will be the force acting on this side 2 and this will be 1 it's like a trapezoidal
okay and you have to understand that the force acting i can find out the resultant force acting on this side let it be f2 and this will be f1 and we can understand from this figure f1 will be less than f2 okay f1 will be less than f2 so this element the element is not in equilibrium element is not in equilibrium so to keep this element in equilibrium i have to give a i have to provide some amount of load we have a force acting here in this direction and we have a force acting here in this direction and to keep this element in equilibrium that is this small rectangular element i have to provide a force in this direction because we have a large load acting on this direction and we have a small load acting on this direction so to counteract that we have to uh, provide a shear force i put df in this direction that is from left to right okay so now we will go for equilibrium in x direction summation of force along x direction should be equal to zero and i will take this direction as positive we have f1 plus df minus f2 is equal to zero okay and let this area this area let the area be da okay now we can write f is equal to sigma into da for a small area okay now we will let this is equation number 1 we will convert this equation 1 in terms of equation 1 in terms of stress that is sigma okay that is sigma so this is a small element for the entire structure we have to integrate so that will be f1 will be equal to integral over the area a this area a is nothing but the area of the cross section area a sigma into da plus df minus integral over area a the sigma 1 sigma 2 into da should be equal to zero okay now what is sigma 1 integral over area a m into y by i into da plus df minus integral over area a m plus dm into y by i into da this is for sigma this is sigma 2 and this is sigma 1 okay now i can cancel out this m uh, y into i da into this one finally i will be getting df is equal to integral i am taking in next other the other side it will be dm by i into y da okay so i can get dm divided by i into integral y da that will be equal to your df okay so df is nothing but the shear force acting parallel to the application of the load that is df is nothing but the shear force acting the shear force acting parallel to this application of load now i'll divide df by dx okay that is shear force divided by dx what is dx here that is the length of this element okay dx is the length of this element so df by dx is nothing but the shear force per unit length that is equal to dm by dx into 1 by i then we have a term integral y da and if you recall your 
स्ट्रंग ऑफ मटीरियल इंटेग्रल वाई डी ए इज नथिंग बट फर्स्ट मोमेंट ऑफ एरिया फर्स्ट मोमेंट ऑफ एरिया एंड इट इज डिनोटेड बाई क्यू सो आई सब स्टूड डी एफ बाई डी एक्स इज इक्वल टू वॉट इज डी एम बाई डी एक्स ओके फ्रॉम लास्ट लेक्चर दट इज वी डिराइव दट द राइट ऑफ चेंज ऑफ बेंडिंग मोमेंट इज यूर शियर फोर्स So dm by dx is your right of change of bending moment. So I'll write the shear force that will be v, and this term will be q divided by i. Okay, and df by dx is equal to v q by i, where v is the shear force, q is the first moment of area, and i is the moment of inertia. And df by dx is nothing but shear force per unit length. That is nothing but your shear flow. Okay. That is denoted by small letter Q. Q is equal to V Q by I. Q is your shear flow. Shear flow is nothing but shear force per unit length. Okay, and we have a formula for shear stress. Tau is equal to V Q. By I T. Okay, now we have Q is equal to V Q by I, and tau is equal to V Q by I T. So if you are, um, if we can write from this equation, Q is equal to tau into T. So this will be V Q by I T into T. So we'll be getting V Q. By I, this equation is same as we derived earlier. Okay, so we have one more definition. Q is equal to shear stress into thickness, and the general definition is shear flow is nothing but shear force per unit length, and the unit is newton per meter or newton per millimeter. This is the unit for shear flow okay now we will see how this is applicable for air frame structures consider an aircraft as in the figure you can see this is the top view of the aircraft and this is the front view of the aircraft and we have a elliptical lift distribution over the wing and this wing will be subjected to bending and you can see that we have different control surfaces uh, throughout the wing for your elevator as well as rudder and uh, as well as the horizontal vertical stabilizer and in vertical stabilizer we have a control surface called rudder if the rudder is deflecting now when the rudder is deflecting we will be having a uvl acting Throughout the rudder, okay. If a if a when the rudder is deflecting, there will be certain amount of increment in the lift load or a normal force. This will be the distribution that will be a UVL, uniformly varying load. Okay. Now this few this is the fuselage of the aircraft, and the fuselage is clamped at the wing. The fuselage structure. fuselage is clamped or fixed at wing section at wing root okay now if i take a section here this will be something like this we have a structure to be like this and you have the deflection of the rudder and this rudder deflection will produce a uvl on the vertical tail and this force will be transferred to the fuselage in shear the uvl is transferred transferred to fuselage by shear load 
okay because basically the fuselage will be ha having a skin structure and will be having number of frames arranged throughout the fuselage and the fuselage will be carrying the load in terms of shear so this shear load is distributed throughout the fuselage structure in terms of shear so we can see there will be distribution of shear load throughout this cut section this is section a of the fuselage you can see the distribution of this shear load or shear stress throughout the fuselage section and this continuous distribution of shear stress is called shear flow okay and you can you have to understand that the shear flow is constant tau is constant through the thickness of the section okay through the thickness of a thin wall section because this shear flow will be applicable to thin wall section and tau is constant through thickness and across this circumferential area or circumferential circumferential length this will be varying across this direction it is varying but across this direction it will be constant not constant near, nearly constant this will be varying and you have to also understand that the airframe structure will be having more amount of thin wall structures and because of this thin wall structure there will be more amount of shear stress distribution and the distribution of shear stress throughout the thin wall section is called shear flow which is nothing but shear stress into thickness and it is also called shear force per unit length so q is nothing but tau into t also q is equal to vq by i and it is also defined as shear flow is defined as shear force per unit length okay this is the proper definition of shear flow this you have to understand okay so whenever we have a deflection of control surfaces the the control uh, the control surfaces will transfer the load to other structural members in terms of shear because we have more amount of skin structures throughout the airframe structure and this continuous distribution of shear load is called shear flow and that's all about this lecture and see you in the next lecture thank you so much